Welcome to the channel. This is Ephemeris, and today I'm just going to give a little bit of background about myself and also introduce you to my current builds that I've been doing in this fairly young world still. I'm still pretty new to Minecraft. I've only been playing for maybe four months or so. I started off playing with my daughter on Xbox and then decided to branch out to the PC version and take full advantage of what Minecraft has to offer. So I'm excited to share with you some of the things that I'm picking up along the way and hopefully also giving you plenty of things to shake your head about because I'm probably not very good. So we're gonna start off today with a quick tour of the base and look at where I'm at and then talk about some problems I gotta fix and also what my next projects are. So come along and let's go take a look. So starting off right away, one of the things that you'll see is I have a bunch of manual farms still. This is a piece that I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with fairly quickly. I have my wheat farm here. I have my original bamboo farms, my sugarcane farms. I really don't do anything with these at this point in time because I've moved on to some automated systems. And inside this wheat farm, I do happen to have a little cow farm here. Push the button, cows all float up. All of you probably have seen these farms. Very condensed, efficient farm for when I need it. Uh, right now, I'm not needing this as much as I once did. I don't really need the food. I got plenty of food, it probably lasts me for a very long time. And I got lots of leather and books for what I need. Beside this, I have one of my first automated farms, or actually probably the third one I built, which was a pumpkin and melon farm. And I ended up building this because I have some villagers that I can trade these with fairly easily and get a, quite a few emeralds for. And this one it was a design that I saw on Mumbo Jumbo's channel. And of course, <laughs> if you don't know who Mumbo is, you need to go check him out. Most of you should know him. He's pretty big up on YouTube and... I tend to get a lot of ideas on how to redstone things from Mumbo, along with others like Pixel Rifts. Um, I also really like watching some of the um, El Mango videos, who the Psycraft guys are pretty amazing. Um, and if you're not watching them, go ahead and ch you should be checking them out. And anybody pretty much on Hermitcraft season six, you should be watching as well, uh, instead of me. me I'm hoping to show you how not to do things. So down below here, we also have a carrot and pump, uh, potato farm. This was one of the first farms I tried to automate inside my base here. And the result was, well, pretty disastrous. I'll, I'll talk about more about that once we get inside the base. So besides these uh, carrot and potato farms, some other farms that I have going, I currently use this farm, which is my sugarcane farm. Uh, it's a very small, compact design. I am not sure exactly who I saw the video for this from. It's either El Mango or Mumbo Jumbo that I got this from. And it's a pretty nice design in that when I hit this button here, it's going to push this dirt block back and forth through really quickly. That ends up tricking the sugarcane to grow very rapidly. And every time it grows, it gets knocked off by a piston and it collects into these chests down below which fill up very quickly. Typically, if I'm building a project around the base and I've just emptied these all out, I can get them all filled up within an hour or two. Uh, one thing that you're gonna notice wandering outside my base are these guys, my iron golems, my first iron farm. Did not go so well, and I'll show you that on the inside just in a moment. A little bit of nether wart with soul sand. I have some doors on the base just to try to keep the mobs out which is important because I do have a villager breeding or villager uh, trading hall in here and I do have some villagers I don't want to kill off right away. So this was my original iron farm and it worked okay as long as I killed off those iron golems that were spawning outside. I tried to prevent them from spawning outside of the uh, breeding area and it didn't work real well. I built this right with the release of um, wow, can't get out. Right with the release of 14.0, I believe, when they just updated the iron farm mechanics and 
I had some problems with it and now you can see most of my golems are spawning outside which is okay because when I do bring back a pillager raid it is kind of nice to have them out there because they end up being right in the path of most of the pillagers down below here I have a trading hall this is a design I uh, picked up from I'm not sure who I picked this one up from a real simple design these uh pretty standard design for a trading hall little cubicles i got their trading st their workstations down below trap doors in the middle so they can't get out and they're standing on a little pressure plate that pressure plate works a little redstone that activates an activator rail that was behind them up above here and would knock them out of mine carts as they came by and then they would walk into their cells and be stuck there for all of eternity I ended up getting all these from my first failed automated farms. I uh, built some indoor farms here, had a farmer, had some villagers to toss the food to, and it didn't work out. The villagers got together, they bred a lot of other villagers, and before I knew it I just had two massive farms with a lot of villagers. For some reason when they first started breeding they really shouldn't have been able to continue to breathe. There weren't enough beds uh, with the current me mechanic, uh, but they did. And we ended up with this massive problem, or I ended up with this massive problem, which is where I'm gonna get all my villagers until I get rid of them. And you can see some of the remnants of my rail system that I had up here. I've deconstructed a lot of it because I needed it for my other iron farm. But let's go back outside and take a look at some of the other things that I got going on. And as we do that, we'll run by my storage system. I'm in the process of starting to build this out. I got some water streams here that are carrying things along. We've just got some standard uh, redstone in the back to create a filter. These top ones are not filtered. These bottom chests are. And then I take any of the design bricks from these and place them up here. So I kind of have some organization. And then back here, I just have a wall of barrels with a bunch of different types of things that I'm collecting, all my redstone here, my components in there. Pretty easy. Uh, it's working a little bit. It just does take some time to get it all cleared out. And then over here, we have a sheep farm, automated sheep farm. And this is from one of the 14 updates where the dispensers can use shears. And this design is from Pixel Rift's videos. Uh, if you do pix uh, search for Pixel Rift and his automatic sheep farm, he will go through exactly how all this works. But essentially, it's working off observers and a shear, and it creates all the wool I need. And down in here, we just have some hoppers that are collecting it. And each of the sheep are dyed a different color, so I get different colored wools, and I have all of that ready to go should I ever need it. This setup is probably more than I will ever need. Uh, if for some reason I need a whole lot of, say, gray wool, I can stop this very easily in the back, re-dye a couple of these sheep, and it will produce the wool I need very, very rapidly. So it's a nice little farm. This also happens to be one of the buildings, along with my pumpkin and melon farm, that have started to put some time into to dressing up and trying to hide some of the ugliness of some of the automated farms. Uh, this is in some ways also inspired by Pixel Rift's uh, one of his in his um, survival series, which is really good. Um, this is somewhat similar of idea in my head when I went to build it as the first barn that he built. Uh, there's obviously some differences to it, but that's kind of where it's at. And if you looked in the background as I was talking, you saw some mobs falling. This is just my standard. Uh, mob spawner. We have some platforms up there that are basically have no light on them. So even during the daytime, we get some mobs coming out. There's a timer at the top um, that we can't actually see because of the clouds. It releases the water from the dispensers every now and then, washes everything to the bottom, and they just drop to the bottom and collect. Pretty standard mob farm. Uh, I think Tango has some good examples of these and some others. Pretty simple. The other thing that's clear at the top is there's a platform for me to hide out in and uh, maximize this if when I want to. And there's also an automatic uh, AFK fishing spot up there. 
so that I can get some additional pieces. This bridge here I just finished recently. I wanted an easier way to get across to my iron farm when I wanted to. And so I went ahead and put this in. I was trying to go with a arched bridge type of look. And for now it's okay. The one other thing I did is I decided since I might be over here building other things, I put in just this little safe house, this little bunker. Um, and this has been helpful in that Sometimes when I get pillager rage, especially late in them, I have to run and I can come over here, I can hide, I can heal up and then I can go back out and fight the pillagers. Then on this side here, we do have an iron farm that produces enough iron for me. Uh, this is not very long for me to be able to get that amount. Uh, this design, I believe I might have got from Mumbo Jumbo. Um, could be wrong on that one, but it's just two platforms. We have a bunch of beds in the middle with the composters, I believe, on the outside. This will uh, maximize, it tries to maximize the amount of area that golems can form and also maximize the amount of gossip villagers can do. This works pretty well, and again, this amount of iron I'm getting from it is more than sufficient for my needs. This, for the most part, are most of my builds that I have currently. Some obvious kind of glaring problems is that I got these big blocky buildings that I've never done anything with. Or actually take the time to break this down and build it, uh, which I just haven't wanted to do. Down this hole, we can take a little trip down. So I lucked out um, and... We ended up with a slime chunk pretty much underneath the base here. It looks like we got a little slime here hanging out. Uh, and because of that, I happened to be able to just kind of almost drill straight down. And we have this nice little slime farm at the bottom. It's not real fast. I don't even have the second chest hooked up yet. I keep forgetting to bring down a hopper to do that. And this is also where I branch mine out of. We have this nice platform here. It looks like I'm gonna have to deal something with some, occasionally I get some slimes down here, not very often. But when I go up to the next levels, I think I have four or five different levels and it's a pretty simple slime farm, nothing real difficult. We just have a wide hollowed out area. I need to put some iron golems in some of these still because I have, did not have the iron at the time to do it like I have here, let the slime spawn. They see the golem, they try to go kill him. They jump in the big hole, fall in the fire, they roast and I get slime balls. There's a lot I could do to make this more efficient, but right now I'm getting more slime balls than I need. So I don't see the idea of putting in a lot of work to make it more efficient. That's something when I get a little later in the game, maybe I'll do. So this farm up here has to do with my fuel source for my furnaces. And that is simply a bamboo farm. And it is identical to, almost identical to the sugarcane farm that I have. And um, that we have it all blocked in here. The sturt's moving back very fast. It causes sugarcane to grow extremely quickly. You can see how fast it's coming out there. I actually have a, a one tick clock basically set up here with the observers being able to kick out that sugar cane or not sugar cane bamboo as fast as they can and this very rapidly fills up my furnaces with bamboo bamboo is not the best fuel source by any means but the speed at which it can grow and how much you get makes it pretty efficient in terms of amount of effort i need to collect it um, i may change this over at some point in time because i don't like the sound of this running all the time and it feeds just right over into basically my top of my base right here so you can see all the bamboo I have here with my furnace running full time that will more than keep up and matter of fact I have to turn it off from time to time just to deal with the backlog of bamboo so it's a pretty good little bamboo farm and in here which I just ran by the kind of little final farm that I have that I haven't broken down yet is this original sugarcane farm. I unfortunately can't remember who 
I got this idea from. Definitely not my own. Um, it's a pretty standard sugarcane farm, so it's nothing real, really far out there. I think I first saw this when I was watching Hermitcraft Season 6 and Impulse did a, a somewhat similar sugarcane uh, setup as this. And basically we just have the observers, they see the sugarcane grow, they trigger all the observers at once, dumps the sugarcane into the water streams, they fill up a uh, into the hopper, into the chest, and I have a nice little sugarcane farm. Very simple. I would like to thank you for joining me today. Thanks for taking a little quick tour of the base. It's not much. It can be done by a lot of people very quick, quickly and probably a lot better than I can. But thank you anyways, and good luck in your games, and see you later.